Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is tips number 1060. It's part two of a two-part video on using the tool post grinder on the nine inch south bend lathe. Now if you have not watched part one, that is number 1059, make sure that you do because it's a long video and it's all about the setup and the description of what I'm doing. And in this particular video, I'm going to get right to work and we're going to grind a 60 degree center in the headstock. So let's begin. Any type of grinding operation is dangerous, especially to your eyes. So always wear either a full face shield or some type of goggles in addition to your regular safety glasses should the wheel break or explode. That, that is your big danger here. So be very careful you do not uh, put it in gear and advance the carriage or anything like that. Matter of fact, put the gear train in neutral so the carriage cannot move and cause a crash. And really all of your feeding is going to be done with the crank on the compound and the crank on the cross slide. Remember the lathe will be run in reverse and the grinding wheel on the Dumore grinder will be rotating in this direction I don't know if you can see the little arrow on there. So in review, the lathe spindle will be run in reverse. And look what speed I'm at here. I do not know the RPM, but it's, it's kind of a medium speed. And then the grinding wheel, I'm going to turn it on now. So you can see what I'm doing, but the very first thing we need to do is to dress the wheel, and I've talked about that in the earlier video, but I'm going to actually do it now. Again, particles fly everywhere, both from the, uh, the wheel and uh, particles from the diamond and all of that. It just flies everywhere as a fine dust. So we need to protect the machine from that dust. So I'm going to use some uh, old denim aprons and drape this the best I can because we don't want that fine dust getting into the gears or any of the intricate parts. And we can capture probably about 90% of it, but not all of it. It will become airborne and it just goes everywhere. So if you're in a shop with a lot of other machinery, you may want to protect that as well. I know it looks like Bubba was here, so I've got duct tape across here. It just looks terrible to keep the dust out of that back gear. And I've tried to protect this, and we've got denim here and here. I can't cover everything, but I've done my best, and there'll be a major cleanup done to this machine or any machine where we do grinding. So when I'm done with this operation off camera, I will thoroughly clean the machine with thinner, and then I will oil it. And what is the purpose of dressing a wheel? It does several things. For one, it shapes the wheel, that is, it squares it off. It sharpens it, that is, it exposes new grains of grit. I, don't ha I have no idea what the grit is on this wheel. It's just whatever was on here when I bought it. And it will remove any... Uh, particles in here, that is if somebody was grinding aluminum or something is stuck in the wheel, it will take care of that as well. So dressing is very important. Remember this is the diamond nib right here that is actually doing the work. So before I start the machine, again, I'll turn both motors on and then I'm going to very slowly and cautiously advance the cross feed until the diamond nib touches the wheel and I'll either hear that or see it and then I will proceed to take several passes back and forth like this and then changing the depth of feed just minutely until the wheel is squared up and true. I don't want to take any more off of it than necessary. You can see that the wheel is already greatly reduced in diameter and on its last legs but then again so am I. Okay, here we go. I got my shield on.
this. The job is done. Did you see all the grit go flying? Wasn't quite as bad as I expected. So now I'm going to remove the uh, dresser here with a wrench. You watched me install it last time. Then I will rearrange the carriage into position here so I can start grinding the center. Uh, I installed that center last time, you might remember. And it's in a sleeve and I tapped it in place. So th that center isn't very good at all, but it's much better than this one. I, don't, I do not believe I'm going to do this one because these only cost 10 bucks or so. So why am I wasting my time? You might find this interesting, but again, if you watch the first part, the cost of this grinder, if you were to buy it brand new from uh, MSC or Granger or wherever, $2,800 plus postage and tax. So what I'm doing now is advancing the carriage, as you can see, in getting the wheel into position. And that's about where I want to be, and I'm going to lock the carriage, because we are doing this, of course, by the compound rest method, which is exactly the same as turning a taper on a lathe using the compound rest method of cutting the taper. Remember, it's a 60 degree uh, center, so we want that to be exact. Now, I've got, again, I've got the drapes on here, and it looks like heck. This is going to be a short job, but if there is a long job and a lot of material to remove and a lot of sparks, you may very well start a small fire right here. So if that happens, have some water handy, or we were taught originally to take a rag and wet it down and squeeze it out and use a wet rag in there, but of course then you're introducing moisture onto your machine, but that can all be cleaned off and oiled later. Now I'm not going to put water on there now, I do not think that I need it, but I will stop and do that if necessary. I'm taking a dry run here just to make sure that I have enough travel on my compound. I know I do. Again, the carriage is locked and I want to make sure I do not advance far enough to hit the spindle or the sleeve or anything like that. So without the grinder running, and I'm looking at it from the top, I hope my head is not in the way. Alright, and that's a complete stroke and it's going to work just fine. So on go the goggles, and I'll take several trial cuts to make sure that I'm not cutting too deep. Remember, we only want to take off about a thousand. You'll hear the grinder bog down. Also, a point here I need to make, and you can't see it, and I talked about it in part one, but over here, well, you know what, I'm going to move the camera. I know I talk a lot about safety, and I don't like this bare wire, but we're going to make it through without repairing that. But as I reach around here, I'm not even watching. I'm, I'm watching the grinding wheel, so this is kind of a blind spot. I have to be very careful when I reach around here. I, I don't run my fingers into the pulley and belt here, because I'm after the, the crank here. That's what I am turning on the compound. So be very careful. As I told you, the newer grinders from Dumore have a complete guard around this belt. Okay, let's do some grinding.
Well, I'm done, and it really went great, didn't it? I mean, there was no drama, there was no fire, and I didn't produce nearly as much grinding dust as what I thought I would. I probably could take another finishing pass. It's only, it's not warm at all, so I didn't overheat it because the cuts were so light. Now, it would be wonderful if we were able to grind this with coolant, and of course they would in the factory, and that would give them a better finish. They would have better wheels, and, and just uh, everything about their process would be better than what we can do on kind of a makeshift setup here. Because in fact, we've turned a lathe into a cylindrical grinder, and that's always uh, a compromise. Now I will throw all of this cloth away and you can see that I caught probably 90% of the dust here. I'm pretty sure that I did. And remember I also told you in part one, do not sharpen this so that the tip of it is lethal. We're not going to inject ourselves with amphetamines after all. As a matter of fact, if you do get it sharp, I'd take a, a sander to it and just knock a little bit off of it so you don't scratch yourself. You know what? That was about a one hour setup, but really only a five minute job. So that's often the case with uh, machine work. So I've loosened up the carriage. I'm gonna back this off and I'm gonna try to remove all of this nonsense here without spilling any of it. And I, I might have over dramatized that. Off it all comes and we'll go right into the garbage and then feeling down here. I sure, I still feel grit. Not a whole lot, but I feel grit. So I do not even want to run the carriage across that and get the grit underneath. So that'll all be wiped. So now let's take the center out and examine it. Before I knock it out of there, here's the fishtail, 60 degrees. And you can see I'm right on, or mighty close. I want to talk about the compound now. Just a second, this is a, a little sidetrack, but you need to know this. Before you start the job, make darn sure that the gibs are tight in your compound. If they are not, you're going to get movement as you crank back here, because you're putting considerable force on the entire compound by cranking it like that. So it's, if there's any play, it's going to wobble, and then as you grind, you're going to you hear it dig in. Now, it's a minute amount, but nevertheless, we want to minimize backlash on our machines, no matter what the operation is, sometimes called lost motion, and it has been the nemesis of machinists for 200 years. So using your brass ramrod that I told you to make, let's knock that center out of there. There it is. I should have taken a picture of the, of the before I started, but it, it looks quite good, doesn't it? Maybe a little chatter because of the lack of rigidity here. This is not by any means a rigid setup when you think about it. We got dovetails here, we got dovetails here, and we're, what, six, four inches above the rigid point, and you know, just about everything can move on a lathe. So that is the results. I'm quite satisfied with it. I hope you enjoyed the video, something you're never gonna do because, let's face it, put it in the video dish, uh, comments. If you own one of these or have any desire to own one, they're hard to find and used and too expensive to buy new for the average machinist in his home shop or basement shop. Astute observers may have noticed that I took that horrible little brass screw out of the belt splice here and put in a piece of cat gut. Meow! Okay, here's a pretty nice before and after. This isn't the actual one we did, of course. That would take more grinding. And I wanted to keep the demo short, and that's why I used the other one. But you can see the improvement there, and uh, you can do this on your machines. I think you would enjoy it. Be sure and hang on for about another minute. I put several still pictures at the end, including some of the setup requirements, graphics, and safety things and like that. So check those out, read it, and commit it to memory. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, tell me where you live and all those things. 
If you did not like it, give me a thumbs down so I can decide what videos to make and what not to make. Remember that this little machine will be for sale here shortly. Matter of fact, it might be gone before you even watch this video. Thank you for watching. Tell your friends about my channel. Remember there's 16 or 1800 other videos as well as my seven video courses that I offer for sale. This is Mr. Pete saying thank you so much for following my channel and I'll see you in my next video.